The South African government has joined in the worldwide condemnation of the violence in Israel. This is calling for the immediate cessation of violence, restraint and peace between Israel and Palestine. Now, gunmen from the Palestinian group Hamas launched an attack from Gaza and rampaged through the Israeli towns early yesterday, killing over 300 Israels and escaping with dozens of hostages. Now, Israel responded with one of its most devastating days of retaliatory strikes in Gaza, and over 300 people are reported to have been killed. Fighting continued into the night. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has declared that Israel was now at war, while Hamas leader Ismail Hania says the assault will spread to the West Bank and Jerusalem. Western countries, led by the United States, denounced the attack. At the White House, President Joe Biden went on national television to say Israel had the right to defend itself and issued a warning to Iran and other countries hostile to Israel. The United Nations Security Council will convene today in a closed-door emergency session on the escalating conflict between Israel and Hamas after the group launched a massive, multi-prolonged um, attack from the Gaza Strip. Now, the attack has been condemned from several quarters, including the UN Security Council, General, while countries like South Africa have pointed to their underlying conditions, including continued illegal Israel settlements and the oppression of Palestinians, as among the reasons for the latest escalation. The attacks on Israel have claimed over 200 lives with more than 1,000 injured. Now, these retaliatory strikes from the Israel Defense Force have claimed a similar figure on the Palestinian side as the cycle of violence in this decade-long conflict again takes an escalatory turn. Now, UN Chief Antonio Guterres condemned the, in the long strongest terms the Hamas attack, including the firing of thousands of rockets indiscriminately into Israel and reports of dozens of Israeli hostages, including civilians and soldiers taken by militants. Let's unpack the story further now. For more on this, we are joined by SABC News correspondent Mia Alberti, who joins us now live. Mia, thank you so much uh, for your time this hour. So now take us through the situation. How is the situation in the Middle East as we speak? Well, it's still very active. We're still seeing active uh, gunfights, body to body happening in inside of Israeli territory. Uh, Israeli forces say that uh, Hamas and its fighters still control uh, several uh, cities and settlements um, inside of Israeli territory, including also in the Gaza Strip. Um, and we are still seeing exchange of rockets throughout the night, throughout the morning, um, rockets being fired from Gaza and then uh, Israel replying with more retaliation. So it's still very much an active battlefield, a very chaotic battlefield with still a lot of questions. Um, uh, there's still cases of people being kidnapped, uh, the number of missing keeps rising and rising, uh, people go are going on social media to uh, put photos and videos of their loved ones to see if someone has seen them uh, and so it's a very chaotic situation right now in Israel and in Gaza we also have uh, the latest report by the UN um, Agency for Refugees we have around 20 people that have already been 20,000 people sorry that have already been displaced inside of Gaza uh, half a million of people are without their food aid from the UN because everything is closed in Gaza banks shops everything is closed so it's like a ghost town where people really have nowhere to hide from the constant bombardment that's happening from Israel so still a very very active situation um, where well geopolitics and peace negotiations are not even on the table yet and uh, speaking of possible negotiations, tell us about the emergency meeting that the UN Council will be holding today.
Well, probably the UN will not have any effect on this because if we have, if we look at past examples uh, of UN security meetings, uh, not only about this conflict but in general, they really didn't produce anything, um, and so it is very unlikely that this would be any different from that. Now, of course, the international community is uh, putting pressure. Uh, United States have offered their support to Israel. Uh, Arab countries have offered their support to Palestine, but on the field, um, this doesn't translate in anything at the moment. The best, uh, the best uh, hopes that we can all get for the people of these two countries is that both um, Israel and, and Hamas decide to stop hostilities and sit down to try and get a peace deal. This is what all of the international community is asking them to do. But at the moment, both sides are dealing with an emergency situation um, in which Israel was attacked in their own soil and Gaza is being bombarded and um, all of Palestine is in an active combat situation. So it, they really cannot stop and lower their arms at the moment. We're not seeing, we're not expecting that to happen in the next few hours or even days um, but again like the in in the past the UN did not have that much effect Egypt and Turkey uh, have come forward to offer to mediate between the two countries traditionally Egypt is the country that helps uh, mediate uh, peace talks between these two but what we have heard so far from the Egyptians is that they have tried to uh, to make Israel and Hamas to drop their weapons uh, to say so and to come back to the negotiating table and they're not picking up the phone let's say so so at the moment very difficult to to gauge when it will be possible to actually have uh, a ceasefire and peace talks again now, interestingly, you're making mention of some of the parties that are likely to come onto the discussion table right now. Does this automatically translate to us possibly seeing a solution to this anytime soon? A long-lasting solution, you mean? Sorry, I didn't. I didn't really uh, get to hear your question very well. But uh, there are a lot of uh, countries involved in this, not just Egypt and Turkey for this immediate ceasefire. But when we look at Israel and Palestine, we also have to understand that we have some kind of a proxy situation happening here uh, besides the internal situation which is already so uh, complex and so difficult we also have the interests of the united states in the region we have the interests of iran in in the region of qatar of saudi arabia uh, even within muslim cunt arab countries excuse me that are majority uh, muslim we have uh, different stances and so uh, people in the ground end up paying the price for all of these gameplay um, one of the things that you know in the last uh, day we have heard a lot is about uh, how this would affect um, the normalization of ties between some Arab countries and Israel such as um, such, such as Saudi Arabia uh, but that seems like in that is in such a far future from now because it really is not on top of the priority list for any of the parties involved they are dealing with a huge internal crisis so of course this will have a huge impact on on the region um, this could uh, with this will for sure in, uh, impact um, this uh, plan to normalize ties between Israel and um, other Arab countries such as Saudi Arabia this will also put United States external diplomacy on the on the question because uh, US officials have been praising how the Middle East have been so stable as it hasn't been in the last few years and now we have the worst one of the worst conflicts happening in Israel again so a lot of things will be put into question once the dust settles um, in uh, Israel and Palestine, which is not due to happen very soon. And Mia, I know just at the top of the conversation, you also touched on, you know, some uh, very heartbreaking uh, images that you've been seeing on the ground. Take us through the extent of the damage. What is it that you're seeing on the ground? It is scenes that we, I mean, I think uh, we have all been uh, seeing violence in Israel and Palestine for 70 years now, uh, with some degrees of uh, intensity. But I think what we have, I think what is shocking people is that this is happening in Israeli territory. We are used to seeing the conflict play out 
in Gaza or in the West Bank, but we're not used to seeing the, um, the conflict play out in streets like, uh, or, or even in any streets in, in, in Israel, to, to be fair. Um, and so these are very shocking images, what we have seen, uh, not to be too graphic, but the images we have seen in some cities of bodies scattered across um, the ground in Israel just shows that these Palestinian uh, extremists have been killing everyone and anyone that they find in their way, uh, harming civilians. We have most of the, a lot of the people that have been missing are civilians. A lot of people cannot contact their loved ones. Um, these are innocent people as well. And in Gaza, we are seeing a, a level of artillery that is also not giving anyone the chance to flee. Last night, on Saturday night local time, um, the Israeli Prime Minister ordered everyone in Gaza to, f to leave because they were going to unleash their fire and fury to say so in Gaza as a retaliation. But Gazan people cannot flee. It's, it's, it's uh, blocked. Um, region and so we are seeing a lot of civilian casualties also in Gaza they are having uh, electricity cuts so it, it is a very I think in, in Gaza we are seeing a lot of uh, fear uh, we're seeing a lot of uncertainty a lot of uh, people losing their homes and their loved ones um, but at the same time trying to support this invest this uh, this uh, attack because they do support uh, this uh, this uh, movement to try and liberate Palestine and free uh, Gaza and in Israel we're seeing civilians that are not used to any type of violence at all having to live uh, extreme levels of violence so for both uh, sides civilians are really really suffering and, and uh, having really really um, hard hours of uh, in their lives with with really no idea of when they might be able to return to their semi semi normal lives at least in Gaza life will never be extremely uh, normal um, and also the unpredictable nature of these events are also concerning because people do not know what to expect even experts even politicians were taken by surprise and so that also adds a layer of fear to civilians on both sides now let's talk about some of the countries that have added their voice into this conflict which countries have condemned um, the attack thus far and let's also zoom back in as to how concerning is this conflict currently Well, most Western countries have condemned the violence and uh, some of them have said that they fully support Israel and Israel's uh, right to self-defense. We have heard that uh, from the United States being one of Israel's or even Israel's strongest ally uh, with Joe Biden saying that they stand against, I with Israel, excuse me, that they will not leave Israel alone to, le to deal with this crisis. Um, and then on the, in, in the Arab world, we, we saw a lot of countries being diplomatic, trying to urge both sides to drop their weapons, to find uh, a solution. And then we have other countries such as Lebanon, for example, where I am, um, where officials uh, have shown more sympathy towards a Palestine saying that they support, they continue to support uh, the long-lasting uh, Palestinian fight for liberation, uh, saying that uh, what, hap what is happening uh, in Israel is a fruit of years of occupation and violence and that uh, the violence in Israel and Palestine will only stop when Israel recognizes the state of Palestine and Jerusalem as their capital. And not only Lebanon, we have heard this from Qatar as well. Um, we know that Qatar has also been a country that historically has um, had a presence of the Hamas group um, and many meetings and peace meetings have uh, taken place there. Um, and so across the Arab world we're seeing more sympathy towards the Palestinian cause and uh, here in Lebanon, uh, Hezbollah, the Iran-backed group, Iran obviously also supporting Palestine, the, but uh, on Saturday, when after shortly after this began, the Hezbollah uh, group said in a statement that what is happening in Israel is fruit of the occupation and that what is happening now should also send a message to Arab countries who are seeking to normalize ties with Israel, such as Saudi Arabia, um, because this is a message that although you could try to normalize ties with Israel, the Palestinian cause will not die. 
All right, that's SABC News correspondent Mia Alberti joining us for the latest on that devastating story. Thanks very much indeed for that.